Another near no hitter this past week, John Farrell of Cleveland lost it on a base hit by Kevin Seitz, who with no outs in the ninth. Farrell finished with a one hitter. In the how do you explain this department, Jack Morris of Detroit beaten by Seattle, and he saw his record drop to 0 and 6. And Frank Viola of the Twins, last year's Cy Young winner, with another defeat, he dropped to 0 and 5. Here's the defensive play of the week, Len Dykstra of the Mets, with that sensational catch to pull off thievery. And baseball's hottest hitter, Kevin Mitchell of the Giants, on fire with four home runs in three games. Mitchell leads the majors with 10 homers, 33 RBIs. He had a career-high 19 home runs for all of last season. And that about wraps up this edition of the Baseball Pregame Show. A program reminder tomorrow at 4 Eastern Time, NBC Sports will begin its coverage of the inaugural Tour de Trump, a 10-day championship cycling race. That's tomorrow, starting at 4. But right now, many of you will be watching the Mets with 20-game winner David Cohn going against the Houston Astros, Vin Scully and Tom Seaver at the mic. Some of you will see the Oakland A's go against Jack Morris and the Detroit Tigers with Bob Costas and Tony Kubek. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Marv Albert. Let's go to the ballpark. in upstate New York and ends by the Jersey Shore between 900 miles of championship racing Tour de Trump the dawn of an American classic you can still buy a steel for as little as $139.95 see the FS48 steel grass trimmer do you know where your steel dealer is? You'll find him in the yellow pages, under saws. No matter what side of the river you call home, your Corn Belt GMC truck dealers have a truck with cash back. Savings or 2.9% factory financing for you. $750 cash back or 2.9% factory financing on GMC's popular S15 pickup. $500 cash back on tough S15 Jimmy's. Plus, buy a full-size Sierra pickup now and get an automatic transmission at no extra charge. Hurry to your Corn Belt GMC truck dealers. GMC, number one in resale value. All over America, people are investing their money in U.S. savings bonds. They pay competitive rates, and they're free from state and local income tax. U.S. savings bonds. To find out more, call 1-800-US-BONDS. Under the big top, that is the Houston Astrodome, Glenn Davis is almost a one-man show. Second in the league in home runs and total bases. Fourth in runs scored and runs batted in. The Astros have hit five home runs at home. Glenn Davis has hit all five of them. Meanwhile, Darryl Strawberry, second in the league for the most valuable player award last year. Seven home runs, 11 RBIs this year. So today in New York, the battle between two of the young giants in the National League, Darryl Strawberry and Glenn Davis, on the NBC Game of the Week. The National Broadcasting Company, now in its seventh decade of bringing you baseball's memories. Baseball's Milestones. Baseball's Magical Moments. Baseball's Miracle. NBC Sports proudly presents the Major League Baseball Game of the Week. skies with patches of blue temperatures close to 70 and humidity high enough to make you think about the possibility of rain
Hi, everybody. I'm Vin Scully, along with Tom Seaver. Welcome to Shea Stadium, where the Astros have a chance to play in the great outdoors as they come in here three games out of first place in their division. And the Mets have really started to turn it on, Vinny, the way people would expect them to do. They just came back from a five-game road trip. They won four out of the five. They lost one in Houston, and the pitcher that lost was David Cohn, who we'll see here pitching today. And when he lost, it was somewhat of a surprise, not that he would lose, but that he would give up seven runs against a ball club that doesn't usually score that many. And a, score, a team that does score runs, of course, is the New York Mets. They expect to score runs, and they have been scoring runs. Uh, the big guy in their lineup, Daryl Strawberry, who is an outstanding offensive player, has terrific power. The difference between the two ball clubs is that the New York Mets and, uh, have a great supporting cast around Strawberry. Howard Johnson in front of him, Kevin McReynolds, Keith Hernandez, a great supporting cast, and they can protect him. That's one reason why the, the New York Yankees went out and got Jesse Barfield to help protect Don Mattingly. Well, the Houston Astros have a great home run, an RBI man in Glenn Davis, but he's suffering from lack of support. Caminiti and Bass, 10 and 11 RBIs, and today the man hitting behind Glenn Davis is a left-hand singles hitter without power, Terry Poole, so you can see the contrast between the two teams. And they'll be facing, the Astros will be facing one of the outstanding pitching staffs in Major League Baseball, of course. Great starting pitching and great relief work. A terrific bullpen. If the starting staff does get in trouble, the Mets have a, a just a superb bullpen that can come up and, and, and shore up if things go wrong. And the Astros, meanwhile, are without Mike Scott, who has a hamstring. Larry Anderson is out for a while. Dave Smith, a broken ring finger, albeit on his left hand, he'll be able to pitch. We'll get to the starting lineups, all the pregame stats and stories, all coming up right after this. You hear the thunder. You can see it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports group, Grand Prix. Nine percent GMAC financing, or up to sixteen hundred dollars cash back for first-time buyers. If you don't like the looks of your car, shoot it. With Son of a Gun, protect it from STP. If your dash looks dull, shoot it. Your seats are shot, shoot them. Your tires look flat, heck, shoot them too. But don't leave your roof a wreck. Give it some luster. Give your car high-caliber protection with Son of a Gun from STP. Son of a Gun. What a difference. Die Hard, America's most trusted replacement battery. The one over 65 million have stepped up to. Now Sears introduces the most powerful Die Hard battery ever. New Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Wherever you want to can go. up and go. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. The game of the week is brought to you by Pontiac. We build excitement. By Citizen Watches, now with warranty to the year 2001. By GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dreams. And by the Die Hard Battery, now with more power when you need it most. As the weather improves dramatically, we'll take a look at a Houston ball club that hopes to do the same. Gerald Young in center field and Rafael Ramirez at short, Bill Doran at second base, and the cleanup hitter Glenn Davis at first. Terry Poole is in left field, and switch hitting Kevin Bass is in right. Ken Caminiti hitting seventh at third. Greg Biggio is the catcher, and Jim Clancy is the pitcher. And trying to stop that Astro lineup is right-handed David Cohn. 
two wins and two losses. Last year, he didn't lose his second game until the 4th of July. He is 1-0 and against the Astros. He is the only Mets pitcher to have turned in a complete game. He beat the Cardinals 9-4, and he is 1-2 and lifetime against Houston. One other thought, he didn't lose his third and final game last year until the 17th of August. So he's a little bit behind schedule, but that was some schedule he kept when he was 20-3. and Gerald Young, Rafael Ramirez, and Bill Doran. Fouled away, 0-1. Young, fleet-footed, a threat to steal a base, but his big problem is trying to get on base. His on-base average is not good. You know, now the Yankees have Jesse Barfield, Tom. Barfield lives in Houston, and there were some rumors about that deal before it was consummated. One story was that Toronto was going to trade Barfield to the Astros but Toronto wanted Young in exchange and the deal didn't go through. I don't know how true that is. Foul away. A lot of talk about the Houston Ball Club trying to get some power to help Glenn Davis as we talked about in the pregame show. Wade Boggs name came up Danny Tartable Jesse Barfield and when the Yankees came up with Barfield evidently they were screaming in Houston they, they, they didn't get him. they were really upset they didn't get another big bat down there. There's another story that's percolating today and that is that Alan Ashby who has the seniority to smash a deal has been asked to give an approval for a deal that would send Allen to Pittsburgh for outfielder Glenn Wilson. So they figured that they could give up a switch hitting catcher to get a little more bats in there from the outfield. Easy out one away. Let's look at the Mets defensively Tom. The Mets defensively an outstanding defensive team today not as uh, uh, strong with Howard Johnson at shortstop but Kevin McReynolds in left Bunny Dykstra in center still strawberry in right field Dave Maggot in the third Howard this is the offensive lineup that Davey Johnson puts in he uses Howard Johnson in short Greg Jeffries in second Hernandez and of course Gary Carter behind the plate David Cohen on the mound Rafael Ramirez checks in with one out in the first inning. Ramirez as he stands at the plate hitting 248 and Raphael no particular streaks but he has hit in five of his last six and promptly makes it six out of seven. So Ramirez a base hit and that'll bring up Bill Doran. Doran the switch hitting second baseman. Hitting 283 and has very, very good numbers from this side of the plate. He's hitting over 300 from this side and a five game hitting streak. The amazing thing about Bill Dorn last year, he played with a torn rotator cuff and hurt him all year long and still was able to hit 248. I mean, he had arthroscopic surgery after the season, but he is really a bulldog. Won a game the other night up in Montreal with a, an extra inning home run. The Astros have come in from Montreal. Ramirez two for two in stolen bases. Doran hits it foul off third, and that one will hit the roof of the dugout. And the count one ball and one strike. Doran means a tremendous amount to the Houston Ball Club. He led National League second baseman in fielding. So with Glenn Davis leading first baseman in fielding Houston became only the second National League team in the last 25 years to have two men on the right side of the infield leading in fielding that means something special one ball one strike there are some people in the National League Benny that think that this fellow right here Bill Doran is the best second baseman in the National League over Ryan Sandberg one of the most underrated players in the National League. And you consider that he played and never squawked, never said a word last year about his left shoulder. If he had played in New York, Los Angeles, and or Chicago, he'd have gotten much more exposure. That's the difference, playing yeah. in the big media centers. That's right. One and one to count to Bill Doran. David Cohn, a 20-game winner last year, trying to pick up his third. And there they go on a hit and run play. Missed at the plate. Carter to Johnson, and they get him easily. <laughs> Gary Carter has now thrown out 13 of 31 runners. That's better than a 40 percent. 
percentage. That's remarkable. And five of the last six. One of the things the Astros have to do in order to score runs, they don't have the power through their lineup, is get a running game going. Carter has been throwing extremely well. And so is David Cohn as he blows away Bill Dore and no runs a hit, nobody left. At the end of half an inning, Astros nothing. Mets coming up. Itching for driving excitement that's a blend of hot looks and high performance, then Grand Am is your car. Now get 2.9% GMAC financing or up to $1,600 cash back for first time buyers. <laughs> the moment. There are those our lives endure, and those our hearts endear. So whether it's the moment you need cash, or a moment meant to share, you can count on MasterCard in nearly three times the number of places as American Express. Wherever you happen to be, wherever the moment may find you, MasterCard, master the moment. Tastes so crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. This bud, this bud, this bud's for you. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours. Ask your GM dealer how custom tailored smart lease helps you drive home the new GM car or truck of your dreams with low monthly payments. Dreams of America. GMAC. No score. We go to the bottom of the first. The Mets, winners of nine of their last 11, will have Len Dykstra, Howard Johnson, and Keith Hernandez, followed by Darrell Strawberry, Kevin McReynolds, and Greg Jeffries. Gary Carter, Dave Magadan, and David Cohn. And on the mound for Houston, big Jim Clancy trying to lower the boom. He is one and one. Clancy leaving his most recent start with a strained left hamstring. That was when he started on the 24th against Philadelphia. Ironically, coming over from the American League, Clancy got the first base hit of his career and then strained the hamstring running it out. Tough break. You don't get to hit that American League. <laughs> it's that awful DH. Lenny Dykstra, who is not exactly a Ricky Henderson, but he does have eight home runs leading off. He hit his eighth on Wednesday. Ricky, of course, with 36. On the corner. Caminiti playing in on the grass. Davis shortens up at first, so... They're looking bunt. One of the great things about speed, you pull that defense in, makes that infield a lot shorter. The ball in the holes to get by the infielders a lot quicker. Two and one. And that's going to be hit down the left field line. Base hit. Terry Poole over to get it. And Dykstra will hold with a single. I'm wondering if we can take a close-up of Dykstra's hands pretty hard. See if he's wearing, yeah, see his right wrist. See that little thing or that's a little kind of a plastic bracelet. What that is is part of a boogie board or surfboard bracelet and they cut the leash off and he started to wear it. The next you know Daryl Strawberry wore it and then Gary Carter wore it and everybody's starting to wear the so it's a touch of Southern California. That's a, a surfboard bracelet he's got. Players aren't suspicious, though. No, not no. at all. Superstitious? No, <laughs> not at all. Here is the hot hitter now with Dykstra at first, Howard Johnson, who has really heated up, especially since they moved him in that number two slot. Look at those numbers. Ojo beating Danny Jackson's ball game. He beat Ron Dibble with a home run the other night. 10 innings. The Mets beat the Reds 3-2. Oh, 
ball one. There's no question that the offseason trade rumors about Howard Johnson going here, going there, going to Seattle for Langston definitely bothered his head. He had trouble throwing at the beginning of the season. His average is way down. All of a sudden, you go out of town for a couple of weeks and come back, and Howard Johnson's hitting 300. You know, we were talking about Dykstra wearing that bracelet, and I was looking at Johnson's wrists to see if he was wearing one. And time, I believe, yep, a balk. Balk called against Jim Clancy. So down to second goes Len Dykstra. One of the things about the National League umpires, they feel, I was talking to Frank Pulley, the first base umpire, about how strict the National League feel they've always been on the, on the balk rule. And that the American League got most of the action last year. And I don't know why that's a balk. I feel like he came to a complete mm -hmm. step. If that's normal speed, he came to a complete stop there. And now Doug Harvey is explaining it to the young catcher for the Astros. Interesting. Frank, Pulley, Frank Pulley said, we feel that we've always enforced it. And we think the National League, the American League last year, got all publicity because they called 700 and some odd box because they had let it get so lax in the American League. Whereas we feel we've been strict here in the National League. Most balks in the league charge against Houston, and it brings up a point in the difference in the fall off of the balk call from last year to this. Found away. After 306 games last year, there were 270 balks. Can you imagine? This year, in more games, 329, there were only 103, less than half. The whole idea of it, and is that they want the players to come to a definite stop at the waist. What the American leaguers are doing especially was that their hands would get down and just before they get to the stop, the front leg would start coming up and they would get the jump on the on the base runner. One ball and one strike to count. One and two. That's how to get Howard Johnson out. All speed stuff. Get him out of here. Don't throw him a fastball in the strike zone. That's what Rob Dibble did the other night. He said, I wanted, I know he's a fastball hitter. I wanted to see what he'd do with mine. And he found out he had home run to beat him. One and two. You know, we're talking about that bracelet that Dykstra wears. Johnson decided to put one on, and he had a nine game hitting streak. And then Strawberry put one on, and he had three hits in his first three at bats. Finally, Gary Carter said, I'm going to give it the ultimate test. I'll try the bracelet. <laughs> so they said, OK. And Carter went over for four. When you're hitting, yeah, when you're hitting <laughs> under 200, you do anything. So we'll check him <laughs> later and see if he's got one of those boogie uh -huh. board. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Baby. Strawberry calls them knock bands. <laughs> but it might be underneath that. Let's see. It might be by. It might be. It is. He's got one on there. After a nine game hitting streak, why take it off? Two balls and two strikes. High pop fly, wristband or no, and Rafael Ramirez is there. I tell you, Benny, I was in a slump one time, and my little girl gave me a little pennant off of her, one of her bracelets or whatever, uh -huh. a little like piece of glass. And, oh, I guess Andy was probably eight at the time. And I'd been in a real slump, and I said, "Oh, sure, well, I'll put it in my back pocket." Sure enough, I put it in my back pocket. I pitched with it. I pitched well with it next game it was right, right back, back in my pocket. pocket nobody knew about it I knew about it <laughs> and for the entire rest of the year this little piece of glass <laughs> piece of cut pocket. Your, right back <laughs> in my hip pocket here's Keith Hernandez with a runner at second one out in the first inning no score in for a strike on one Keith is suffering suffering from inconsistency. You know, I don't have one good at bat during the game, and then the next game I have two good at bats, and then a couple of bad at bats. He just can't get it rolling. We really, just seem like have four good at bats in one game, and then have three or four good games in a row. On one, one ball, one strike. With the Mets, of course, they would have to be concerned. Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter are two fellows who are certainly coming to the last portion of their careers. They're also due to be free agents after 89. But there are a lot of interesting names who could go free agent at the end of this year. Fastball missed. 
people like Mark Langston and Vaughn Hayes, Ubi Brooks and Jeff Reardon, Marty Barrett, Ricky Henderson, and Jesse Barfield. And they're Jesse they're Barfield. all free agents mm -hmm. at the end of this year. I think what the Mets want to do is take a good look at Keith and a good look at Gary and see their production on the year and then go from there. And when you look at the Mets minor league system, they have some very, very good pitchers. I don't think they have any real power hitter down there that they would say, well, he's due to be coming up along any any day now. So that has to be an area that uh, needs a lot of thought. Two and one to count. Low, ball three, three and one. This organization does have good pitching. I, mean, I was talking to Frank Cashman about it. They have, you talked in the opening about David West being mm -hmm. a AAA, the outstanding youngster left-hander for the Mets organization but he's talking about they have good pitching he feels all the way through at every level triple A double A even at the a ball in the rookie league they think they have some great arms there's a definite fall off as far as power is concerned anyway that's a strike three and two Joe McElvain was saying one of the problems is scouting he went down and scouted a college game the wind was blowing out the home team using aluminum bats they had to stop batting practice because the kids hit all the balls out of the park and he said how are you going to judge guys when it with the wind and aluminum bats we're in two and walking Clancy is pretty much of a control pitcher his high and walks four in his first game against San Diego which was a winning effort by the way and now he faces Darryl Strawberry who has seven home runs but not a lot of RBI when you realize he has a half a dozen doubles and seven home runs but only with quotes around the word only 11 RBI. It's not like he hasn't had the opportunity he's just not been hitting with men in scoring position. The Mets have hit 23 home runs, Vinny, and the staff has given up 12. New York has 23 home runs, but 17 of those 23 have been solo shots. So they're not hitting with men on base as far as home runs go. And Clancy can't pitch around Strawberry, another heavy hitter on deck, Kevin McReynolds. And now he's digging a hole. Two balls and no strike. Kevin McReynolds, as he waits his turn, is a 300 hitter with three home runs and 14 RBIs. So there's trouble no matter where Clancy looks. 2 0. Darrell, of course, would be allowed to swing if he gets a pitch in a spot where he can drive it. Fouled away. Darrell has struck out about twice as many times as he's walked. He has superb power to the opposite field, too. You pitch him out there out over the plate and if he's thinking and if his head is on straight and he's thinking take the ball to left center field. He has as much power to left center as many right handed power hitters in this game. Two balls and one strike to Strawberry first inning no score. And as a high fly ball to deep right field Bass to the track at the wall it's off the wall. Young plays the carom into Doran and the bases will be loaded. The runners had to hold thinking it might have been caught and it might have been caught. So it's a three hundred and seventy one foot single. A bad play Vinny, in a couple of spots here a bad play by Lenny Dykstra not being at least halfway on the play and a bad play by Kevin Bass in the outfield not getting back to the wall. One of the things the outfielders got to do get back to the wall you can always come off of them. Head back toward the infield, but just poorly played. But Dykstra going back to the bag, sitting right in Keith Hernandez's lap, and you could see the look on Keith's face, how upset he was. Dykstra has to be halfway toward third for that exact reason that if the ball is not cut, you do score. Strawberry should have a double, and then Mets end up with no runs. And the base is loaded with one out. The only consolation, they have a grand slam hitter at the plate. Kevin McReynolds has hit three and he hit two slams last year. So the base is loaded one out. No score but Clancy on the ropes right now. 
And McReynolds checking in. McReynolds has hit in 14 out of 16. Ball one. And better than that, 17 out of 20. He's driven in a run in nine of his last 11. In other words, the Mets would appear to have the right guy at the plate at the right time. Dykstra at third, Hernandez at second, Strawberry at first, and that's popped up. Coming down the line is Glenn Davis. Biggio is calling. It will be Davis and the runners hold. So McReynolds pops it up the chute to Glenn Davis. Big out. Two down. And Greg Jeffries coming up. A couple of big offensive mistakes by the Mets here. One, of course. Dykstra not going halfway, but you remember to leading off the inning, Dykstra gets on, Howard, and then goes to second. Howard Johnson did not get him to third. He popped up in the infield. A couple of things that the Mets have not executed in the first inning here may have already cost them a couple of runs. Clancy now, a little daylight and a chance to get out of the jam, and here is Greg Jeffries. And he hits one slowly to Doran. And Clancy is out of the trouble as Jeffries leaves the three. No runs, two hits, a bad base running mistake by Lenny Dykstra. No score at the end of an inning. Some guys look at this, they see just another brake job. Just another brake job? Not to the guy who drives this car. Not to me either. Mr. Good Friends knows it's not just a car, it's your free. See it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports group, Grand Prix. Now get 2.9% GMAC financing or up to $1,600 cash back for first time buyers. The stars are going to twinkle and shine. How they'll shine this evening about a quarter to nine. I know I won't be late all oh, that happy as day. I'm going to hurry there. I'll be waiting where. They say time is what you make it. At Citizen, we prefer making it beautiful. About a quarter to nine. Citizen, now with warranty to 2001. How hot can it get inside your car's engine? This hot. 570 degrees under extreme conditions. Take a leading motor oil. Take Mobile One and watch. Of course, Mobile One costs more. But under extreme conditions, when you see what can happen to conventional motor oil, it doesn't pay to play with fire. Mobile One. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? friends and good food but my stomach aches my party and my lanta too double strength my lanta too with nearly double the acid neutralizing power of any leading regular strength brand because my life takes my lanta too the power plant of the Houston Astros is leading it off, followed by Terry Poole and Kevin Bass look at the difference huh it's Glenn Davis against the world <laughs> against the field that's exactly right a very big play in the first inning and the Mets have to feel a little bit down about it with Dykstra going back to the bag. He'll probably remember that if you make a play like that it sticks in your memory. <laughs> Doesn't it? Oddly not that you bring that up. Yeah. I did it one day in Chicago. One time. Huh? One time because Gil Hodges was the manager and I never made the mistake again. I was on second base at Wrigley Field. I went back to the bag. Kenny Boswell had hit a ball off the right field wall that I thought was going to be a caught. Same shoes that Lenny Dykstra was in last time. Sure enough, off the Ivy in Chicago, I didn't score. Ended up at third the way Dykstra did. The third out was made. I looked in the dugout, and Hodges had pulled the bat. Remember the old bat rack that was in mm. front of him? Pulled it out and shattered the bat. Oh, my gosh. And I would not go in and get my glove. Was he that way? Ooh, Mr. Hodges. Yeah. You know, everybody thought I would of Gil not, as a gentle giant. I wouldn't. He was. Uh, he could be a, as a, a player. Man, as a player, yes. I would not go to the dugout. Somebody brought me my gloves. Two and two. My hat and my glove were in the dugout. There's Mr. Hodges, one of the retired numbers here, as we pass along with Casey Stingle. 
And they're one of my favorite players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, enough Ever about so me. Ever so modest. You, enough about me. What did you think of me? <laughs> two and two. And down goes Davis on a borderline pitch up around the shoulders. And I think that happens a lot to a, kind of a one-man gang. He's trying to generate something immediately and maybe pressing. Let's see what that is. Well, I was talking to Buddy Bell down in Texas about Glenn Davis, and he said if he does not try to hit home runs, he's one of the best hitters in the National League. And they're just chasing a pitch, really, that looked like it was going to be a breaking pitch out over the plate. Cone got away with it because it just stayed inside. That, plate, that ball gets out of the plate. Adios. And he was up right. cutting. That's it? right. He's ready. Sitting right. I saw a mistake, but it just wasn't as bad a mistake. Now, here is Terry Poole. And in looking at the two lineups, Daryl Strawberry has Keith Hernandez in front of him and Kevin McReynolds behind him. Glenn Davis has two singles hitters, and that's not a put down. Bill Doran hitting third and Terry Poole hitting fifth. Ground ball to the right side. And we have two out. Glenn Davis with those hitters hitting behind him this year not only pool now this would sum up the batting average of all the players on Houston hitting behind Glenn Davis no home runs and only seven RBIs so the question is why in the world would you ever let Glenn Davis beat you and here's Kevin Baz and he hits a one hopper and out on the grass is Jeffries and the top of the second is in the book at the end of an inning and a half the Astros nothing, the Mets nothing. So how do you shatter the bat? I wouldn't believe that. GM makes the dream. GMAC makes the dream yours. Ask your GM dealer how custom tailored smart lease helps you drive home the new GM car or truck of your dreams with low monthly payments. Dreams of America, GMAC. Here's some news the Noid won't like. New Domino's Pan Pizza. Fresh from the oven and delivered in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed. Domino's Pan Pizza. Thick crust, generous toppings, smothered with cheese. <laughs> Sorry, Noid. <laughs> Call for new Domino's Pan Pizza. Nobody delivers better. To prove how long Raindance Car Wax lasts, just add water. the longest lasting protection you can buy. Guy came by today trying to sell me some imitation body parts. Copycat hoods, doors, and fenders for GM cars. But I wasn't buying. You see, I know some of those imitations don't come up the GM specs for fit, finish, and corrosion protection. How do you protect yourself? Ask to see a repair order before insurance work begins and insist on genuine General Motors parts. Now with a lifetime warranty on parts and labor. 42-year-old Art Howe, one of 11 major league managers older than Tommy John. When you see TJ, <laughs> give him our best. I shall. <laughs> Second inning, no score. Gary Carter, Dave Magadan, and then David Cohn. In there, 0 oh and 1. Carter struggling, and of course, at this stage of his career, you can understand the pressure that's on him. And he lifts one into right field. Bass went back. Now Kevin comes in and puts it away. There's been more than pressure on Carter. They tell me the fans have been on him here. So much so that recently, Gary hit a home run and got the cheers. But he refused to come out of the dugout for the customary curtain call. He has one home run, five RBI. So it gets tough 
really as you as your career begins to wind down and he's had a magnificent career ever since 1975. Well, he's had a great career but you know when you're hitting him one you know a buck and change you're going to get a lot of booze and after you've heard a lot of cheers it's not really easy to take it's easy to, you know you can handle it for a while but when you hear it every night night after night it begins to wear just a tad thin. You know it's the old story uh, the player is the last one to know that and maybe that's so. Did you know? I Did you know it was over? I knew it was over. When? I knew it was emotionally over and physically I couldn't pitch up to my expectations of myself. Uh, I knew it was over when I tried to come back. What New York team Mets. were you with when you I tried to there. come back? Not, I felt uh, I pitched well right up to the end of my career. Right up with the, with the Red Sox in 19. 86 I pitched very well for them and they were in a pennant race and John McNamara got me over there and relied on me and I felt like I pitched well Then I came back in the middle of the next year and I tried to come back here with this ball club and I said uh -uh, it ain't there time to go. Well here's Maggot in two balls and one strike. Wow back two and two. Maggot in followed by David Cohn. Mets playing very very well now they seem to have gone to the whip since the 16th of April they're playing about 750 they won 12 and lost only four and you get the feeling it's almost that kind of a club you suddenly shift and they'll take off on you two and two Brown foul outside of first down the line one away second inning no score bases empty but the Mets blew up big chance in the first inning Dykstra tagging up on a ball that wound up hitting the wall had he gone halfway at the time he would have scored and the Mets wound up leaving the bases loaded. Two balls two strikes. Fouled away. You know Vinny talking about quitting and, and when it's time to retire I was very lucky from a numerical standpoint. Mm -hmm. I got past the numbers that a pitcher is supposed to get past you know. I mean they passed 300 wins and passed 3,000 strikeouts. You know, if I'd have been sitting there with 293 wins, well, yeah, sure. I'd you, still be out there. Mm -hmm, you bet. You know, that, that makes a decision a lot easier. And there's a one hopper backhanded by that glove at first, Glenn Davis, the top fielding first baseman in the National League, and you can see why. Fine play. That's a pitcher's delight having uh, Bill Doran and Glenn Davis on the right side uh, of the infield. Having great, great defense behind you, a great thing for a pitcher. And here's a, a great offensive player. But his intensity on defense matches his intensity at the plate. And he has worked and made himself a much better fielder, especially to his right. He goes to his right with much, much more ability now than he did when he first came up. And good soft hands at first base. David Cohn checking in. He's got a little four game history. Pretty good hitter, batting 333. Ball one. This whole staff, New York Met pitching staff, they're all pretty good hitters. And Dwight, the same for the yep, Astros. Yeah, Dwight good. Fernandez. And you look at Houston and see Bob Forsh and Rick Roden. You've got guys who can really swing the bat. One ball, no strike. Fouled away. In fact, Roden, the last I heard, went back to Houston. He's got a, a pulled muscle underneath his right shoulder blade. And we certainly wish Rick a speedy recovery. He means a great deal. And he has not produced the way he can produce because of his physical problems. Roden's record is 0 and 2. One ball, one strike. Round back, 1 and 2. Mike Scott with a hamstring pull. He might have been pitching in this series. Who will ever forget 1986? A 16 inning game that the Mets won. That was game six in the LCS. Had they not won it, they would have had to face him, and he was virtually unbeatable that year. Two and two the count. Larry Anderson is beaten up a bit. Dave Smith has a broken finger. So the Astros still not quite ready to make a run. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled away. They're very lucky. You know, everybody's seemingly playing 500 baseball, with the exception of the Texas Rangers and, let's say, the Oakland. Oakland, there's only two people that really playing decent baseball everybody else everywhere just right around 500 if not uh, a couple under and nobody seems to be more than four games out everybody has still has a chance two balls and two strikes ground ball to the right of Doran but he gets in front of it and that's that 
So the Mets go quietly in the second inning thanks to that play by Davis on Magadan and at the end of two no score. Ladies and gentlemen we hope you're having a great time. The beast within him has gone out of control and may have committed murder. Now David Banner is on trial. The trial of the Incredible Hulk Sunday. We're playing. We're playing for the fun. For the fun. Every week, KWQC TV gives you a chance to watch and win on the Iowa Lotto shows. Wednesday and Saturday nights at 628. See if your six numbers are drawn in the Iowa Lotto. Match three numbers or more and win free tickets to the jackpot. You can't win if you don't play. So watch Channel 6 and win with Iowa Lotto. We've got a million good reasons, a million good reasons to play. Your neighborhood is changing. Whether you live in eastern Iowa or western Illinois, if you have a nose for news and a video camera, join the New Center 6 Neighborhood Network, and we could use your shots on the air. This innovative project is a community-wide effort by New Center 6 to bring you more news, more weather, and more sports home to you each night. Make a difference and call or write to New Center 6 for more details on the Neighborhood Network and put your video camera to work. Dave can't hear. I'm deaf! Wally can't see. Oh, you mean I'm not white? And ever since they witnessed a murder... He reads lips, you're talking too fast. Was there or wasn't there a woman? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman? They can't do anything right. No! 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 Pryor and Wilder are back. See no evil, hear no evil. Rated R. I got you. Join Rick Benjamin and Paula Sands tonight at 10. I'm Marv Albert in New York with an update in Detroit. In the second, Mark McGuire connected for his seventh home run of the season. This with nobody on. McGuire loves to hit at Tiger Stadium. Ten homers in 16 games. Lifetime in Detroit. The Red Hot A's lead the Tigers 2-1 to one in the second as Jack Morris continues to struggle. Back to Vin and Tom. Okay, Marv. Oakland, of course, the first team in the majors to win 20 games and that's kind of a remarkable story without Canseco and without McGuire for a while they just didn't miss a beat didn't miss a beat wow. and if you're going to win in that division you better win when those two guys aren't there in the lineup Caminiti taking ball one in talking more about run production and Glenn Davis problems if you took Kevin Bass and Ken Caminiti and put their averages together I think you can see one of Houston's problems together they have two home runs they have 23 runs batted in and I'm talking 200 at bats so with Kevin Bass sitting quietly in the dugout and Caminiti you'd figure one of them would be hitting behind Davis but they're just not doing it and again if you joined us late there is a more than a rumor Alan Ashby has acknowledged he was asked by Houston to put the seal of approval on a trade with Pittsburgh involving Glenn Wilson. Of course, the Pirates are really banged up. Pirates with Mike Lavalier out, Sid Bream out, Andy Van Slyke out there. That's their machine. So Jim Gott, the pitcher, has been out. Van Slyke is close to coming back, and I guess they feel they could deal Wilson away if Van Slyke is ready to play. Two and two. Chopper to the right side. Jeffrey's on the grass. He's handled three in a row. One down. Jeffrey's a young superstar for this ball club. One of the problems I think with the New York Mets is they make them make their young players superstars before they prove themselves. And then the poor psyche of the young player has to live up to it. You know, he had Jeffrey's a remark. Did you see that remark he had? You know, there's a rivalry always here, Dykstra and Wilson, but there's a big rivalry at second base with Jeffries and Tim Tuffle. Time, no pitch. And Jeffries was quoted in the paper as saying, oh, when I start hitting, it'll go back to normal. And Tuffle was really ticked, and he said, well, that puts down my significance to the team. So <laughs> there's a little bubble there. Ground ball to the hole, short hopped and backhanded by Johnson, safe. And that's a young catcher. In fact, maybe you don't have to say young. Craig Biggio showing very good speed down the line. You won't see a catcher anywhere run any quicker than that. He runs better than any catcher in baseball. 
Buddy Bell was talking about the biggest asset that this kid has. Some are very suspicious, maybe still about his throwing arm, but the one thing he can do is run for a, as for a catcher. It's an outstanding asset, but for a catcher, how long will it last? So Biggio at first with one out. Here is Jim Clancy. They're certainly looking bunt. He shows bunt, and he bunts foul to Magadan. Jim Clancy coming over from the American League has had that was his ninth at bat. He had one hit. We told you he hurt his leg when he finally had a chance to run. And as far as sacrifice, he young. has won this year, but not this time. Two down, Gerald Young coming up. How did you feel when you went over to the American League? And you were told you don't hit over here, pal. You know I don't. I don't. I don't like the DH. I mean, I think it's just it was a gimmick rule, and it's so ingrained now it's going to be here. But I just professionally I didn't like it. Mm. But when I went to the American League, I was at the end of my career. <laughs> From that standpoint, I didn't mind it at all. I miss. You know what I miss? Batting practice. I miss getting out there and hitting the ball hard. Instead of getting in the game and getting jammed all the time. <laughs> One ball and no strikes. Two down. We're in the top of the third. The Astros and the Mets no score. Greg Biggio at first. And Gerald Young, the leadoff man, 0 for 1. You know, the amazing thing about Young, 65 stolen bases last year, a high percentage of caught stealing 27 times. He had no bunts for base hits last year. This, he, he can run with the wind, and he had no bunt base hits. And he has no power. He had over 500 at bats. The only National League player with that many at bats without a home run. And you'd say, well, okay, he's not a home run hitter, but he gets on base a lot. Well, that would be true, but he struck out 66 times. So here's a fellow, no power, struck out a lot, and frustrating to his manager because mm -hmm. if he gets on base, he's going to steal, but how do you get him on base? And an uppercut from the left side, too. And he just uppercut a dad and lifted the nicest, laziest fly ball to Lenny Dykstra. And that's the top of the third. No runs, one hit a man left. We have two and a half in the books. The Astros nothing and the Mets nothing as Gerald Young grows older. The fiber that's pound for pound, five times stronger than steel. And is in the protective vests worn by police. It makes up the unique belt of road handler treadlock radials at Sears. Tough tires you can trust. We switch from forward to shift. Listen to the heartbeat of America. We have to have equipment that will hold up to the job. And the Chevy does it. We're generally pulling something, and generally it's pretty heavy. We use them hard, and they stand up to it. And we do it all day long, and we don't worry about it. Now, that's what we have to have in a truck out here to get the job done. That's the day's Chevy truck. OK, look, I like my steaks very well done. What most people call ruined, I call perfect. I know it's not popular. Now, if I weren't six foot nine, I'd catch a lot of flack. I got a taste for some real food. I heard Larry Bird likes well done steaks, so maybe I'll invite him over for a couple of sirloins. Nice, rare sirloins. I got you, Larry. I got you. I got a taste for some real food. Just how good are genuine GM parts? Good enough for Dale Earnhardt, three-time Winston Cup driving champion. And the same kind of quality that goes into the GM parts for his car goes into the GM parts for your car. So get the goods under your hood. Genuine GM parts from Mr. Goodwrench. Only at GM dealers. Only on GM cars. For water that's as clear as the sky, nothing simpler or more effective than HTH Dry Chlorinator. Now save up to $30 on HTH pool products. America's clear choice. In case you aren't with us, this was the first inning. There were runners at first and second and one out. Darrell Strawberry hit a long fly Ladies ball to right. Bass might have caught that ball, but he fell off it. But Dykstra, instead of being halfway to third on the ball, was on the bag to tag up. So he should have scored, didn't score, and we still have a no-score ball game in the third. It really, changed, it, off. it really changes it around, Renee, because you yeah. look where would Strawberry have been. You know, he'd been all the way around, been to third base. It changes the whole complexion of things for Kevin McReynolds. Ball one. 
Big play. Another interesting thing, one of the many discussions here in New York, to pad or not to pad? That is the question. Will they pad the walls here at Shea? It's a wooden wall, and the players naturally would like to have it padded, especially the outfielders, but it makes a big difference to a padded wall and a non-padded wall, what the ball does when it hits it. So since it's not padded, you saw the ball shot hop, uh, short hop the wall and come right back to Gerald Young. If it's padded, it might have died at the base of the wall. It's just another consideration, another thing going on here. And for a strike, two and one. The field, the field is in very good shape, by the way, Benny, too. Yeah. With the amount of rain we've had here in New York, the head's groundkeeper is Pete Flynn. They've had some new drains put in the outfield in the last few years. It used to be like a swamp out there. Of course, we are originally in a swampy area. They used to the drain. It just was awful. That's going to be looped into left center, and it will fall in front of Gerald Young for a base hit. So Lenny Dykstra, boogie board, wristband, and all is two for two. And the batter will be Howard Johnson. Howard Johnson. Here it is. Just hit it inside out and nudged it into left center. He is a good contact hitter. And when he does that, well, the biggest problem that Lenny has trouble with is that occasionally he will get home run happy. I want to be a home run hitter. I want to be out there with the big boys. Uh-uh. Your job is not to do that. Your job is to go ahead and hit that ball down the left field line, hit it to left center. And that's what he does best. Well, he's two for two today, and he came in hitting 324, so he's really doing a solid job. And here's Howard Johnson. You know, just to conclude the idea of padding the wall here at Shea, recently, the Phillies right fielder, Ron Jones, made an outstanding catch, but he suffered a torn tendon in his right kneecap, underwent surgery, sidelined three months, and they feel had the wall been padded, he'd still be playing. Johnson popped up in the first inning. And he hammers it to right. Back goes Bass at the bullpen. Wall, it's gone. And Hojo is blistering hot in the number two spot. Boy, is he something? He is hitting 11 of his last 12 with 13 RBIs over that. Heading at the top of the lineup, he's just gotten that much, that many more fastballs. And he is just a dead fastball hitter from that left side, and you just can't throw it in the strike zone, especially when the hitter is hot. It's like he got on his toes to hit that one. He has six home runs, and all six as a left-handed batter. And here's Keith Hernandez, 2-0 New York, 0-1. He likes that fastball, especially in the strike zone. Ball is supposed to be tailing away, down and away off the plate. Just stayed out over the plate. And when a hitter, a good power hitter like that, is on a hot streak, they just don't miss him. And that's hit in the air, foul off third, slicing towards the stands. The wind appears to bring it back, and Caminiti makes the play. So Hernandez fouls out to third baseman Ken Caminiti. That's the only out in the inning, and Darryl Strawberry coming up. When he goes over there, it looks like he's heading for the seats right about there, and then whoops, wait a minute, he's coming back to me. One down. The Mets, if you want to play home run ball, you are playing their game. They have hit twice as many as they have allowed. Ball one. They've hit 24. Strawberry had that long single, a 371 foot single in the first inning. Right, one and one. Mets two, Astros nothing. Bottom of the third inning. Two and one to count. Mets had 152 home runs last year, but he led the National League, of course. And second, the runner up. 30 behind Cincinnati Reds at 122. That's in the dirt back to the screen. You want to know another amazing stat? The yeah. club that gave up the most home runs. Mm -hmm. A good pitching staff. The Houston Astros. I looked that up. I couldn't believe it. Playing yeah. half their games in the Astrodome. Reason why I feel 
in the Astrodome. They're fly ball pitchers. Because of the big habit. Astrodome, get in the habit and go on the road and all of a sudden home run. Down the line foul and the count three and two to Darryl Strawberry. Les Moss, the veteran pitching coach of the Houston Astros, watching Jim Clancy, and I'm sure he would agree with you on that fly ball theory, which is more than a theory. And that's it in the air to right. Bass makes the catch, and that thing was just starting to take off. I remember that there's a great scout, one of the nicest men you'd ever meet by the name of Ellis Clary. And Ellis was out scouting, and he's always telling stories. And he said, I was scouting a kid, and they said, well, what kind of a pitcher was he? He said, I'll tell you what kind of a pitcher he was. In the fifth inning, they cleaned down the warning track, <laughs> not the infield. And Clancy's having one of those days. <laughs> they got to drag the warning track in right field. Two down. Here's Kevin McReynolds, who let a big one get away in the first inning. RBIs are bread and butter for him, and with the bases loaded and one out, he fouled out. One ball and no strike. In there. One and one. Mets two runs, four hits. Astros no runs, two hits. Good pitch in on the hands. One and two. You know, in defense of Clancy, he hasn't pitched since April 24th after hurting that leg. And he is basically a control pitcher. That he may not have as good control as, in a sense, in the strike zone. I get about being able to throw him pitches. Maybe he won't have as many base on balls, but the having control goes beyond just strikeouts and base on balls. There's a stat of the most of the having most of the losses of the 1980s, 130. You got to be a pretty good pitcher to have the most losses. Two and two and talking about losses of course when we heard that Mark McGuire had homered for Oakland he hit it against Jack Morris who is really struggling. It's early today but it's something to keep in mind because it's still alive. Ground ball back a third knocked down by Caminiti. Hurries a throw and pulled him off the bat. Davis tried to do a toe dance and couldn't stay there. And McReynolds, who runs exceptionally well, is safely aboard. Caminiti knocked the ball down, made a good play. The thing is that Biggio was setting up outside, and Clancy brought the ball inside. A lot of times that will throw a defensive player off. The throw just pulled Davis off just enough. Good play by Frank Pulley. So uh, McReynolds aboard and Greg Jeffries the batter. And it will be an error charge to Ken Caminiti. Reynolds, of course, a threat to steal. He had his consecutive stolen base streak stopped at 33 against the Phillies back in the middle of April. Jeffries grounded out in the first inning, 0 for 1. The thought that we wanted to bring you just you can see at the end of the day whether it's still alive. You know there has been a shutout in the major leagues for 26 consecutive days now. Since back on April the 10th there's been a shutout every day. Earlier we had a streak. There were eight days where a one to nothing game and 10 out of 11. Well right now. There's a little bit of a shutout here in the third inning. We'll keep track of that. Two balls, no strikes to Greg Jeffries. McReynolds wants to go at first base, too. Two and one. You see him lean in there? He just. I'm telling you. He's stolen four out of five. And Clancy to throw over there. That's the second time in a row that he is. Had his weight leaning toward second, and that's about the only way you're going to get him. Have that weight leaning toward the advancing base. This is a pretty good count now. Two balls, one strike. They might very well figure that will take away the pitch out and then let him go. That's why they might have kept him quiet. We'll see. He's not leaning. In fact, if anything, he's more on his left leg. Yeah. He's going back to the bat. He's expecting a throw over there. <laughs> 
after the last two. He just didn't have his timing right on the last two. and just couldn't quite get it off. Jeffries is a tough hitter up there because he swings at most pitches. He's only walked once this year. That's on the corner. So I think that combination is one reason why McReynolds has been anchored at the bag. Two and two the count to Greg Jeffries. You know, Jeffries came up last year, played 29 games at 321. The press around here, they had him practically on the doorsteps of Cooperstown. Oh, sure. Without a full year in the big leagues. Two and two. You know, one thing Jeffries does, Pete Rose used to do it in his playing days. He'll take the bat after an at bat and clean it with alcohol. What he does is he looks at the bat and sees where he made contact and then will clean the bat for the next at bat. And now Keith Hernandez and Gary Carter are doing it. Fouled away. And I remember Pete, the only difference being Pete's bat would be a lighter color so you could really see the marks. But I guess on that brackish brown bat that he's using, he can still find out just where he's hitting the ball. But it's just a little extra theory. Cleaning your bat but first studying it. You know exactly where you hit. Deuce is wild on Jeffries. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two in, and the Mets lead two to nothing. And the crowd reacting to that foul ball. The ball boy took it away and now returns it. And the crowd applauds. Okay. Everybody's happy. In front of the club owner down to the left of the best dugout, too, Nelson Doubleday. Two and two, there he goes. And it's ball three, and much too late with the throw. I think the ball was low and inside. And Biggio might have lost track of what McReynolds was up to on that pitch. And he never, he hesitated so long, he really didn't have any chance of getting it. The reason McReynolds is such a, an outstanding base runner, I mean, he's a big man, 6'1", 215 pounds, is that even, because, even his size, with his size, he gets at full speed, after his jump, he gets a, he gets that body going, and boom, he's at full speed going to second base. A very efficient runner. He's now five out of six in stolen bases, and Jeffrey's trying to pick him up. Fouled it back. Take another look. The pitch down and in. Vigio just had trouble getting it out of the glove. There was really no chance. But Reynolds got an, a, a big jump at first base. He's a smart base runner. He just reads and anticipates extremely well. Three and two. Got him. So the Mets settle for two runs, two hits, an error, a man left, and the man responsible for the two, Howard Johnson, hitting in that number two slot, is tearing up the place. Right now, let's take a look at the National League. think there's not a nickel's worth of difference between Chevy S10 and Ford Ranger, check Chevy's longer, wider box. Or Chevy's warranty, covering hundreds of non-powertrain parts. Two years longer than Ford's. In fact, there's over 20,000 nickels difference. Because this Chevy costs over $1,000 less. Plus, choose another 15,000 nickels cash back. And you can take that to the bank. That's today's Chevy trip. At last, a new twist in oil filters. The new DuraGuard filter from AC. So good, it can cut abrasive engine wear nearly in half. No use looking for any other filter. Now, there's double the reason to go with AC. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. AC DuraGuard. Why mess with anything less? DuraGuard oil filters are available at everyday low prices at Kmart across the USA. Yourself. Do it for yourself. Do yourself proud with Midwest. 
Wood finish for beautiful color like no other. And Minwax polyurethane for fast drying protection that lasts. You know, a lot of people like to talk while they drive. Well, let me give you a tip. It's a lot easier with a unit end cellular phone. Americans Greg Lamont and Davis Finney play host to the world's best cyclists in this grueling event, the Tour de Trump that begins tomorrow at 4, a 10-day championship cycling race looping its way through historic towns and cities of the scenic northeastern United States. Should be a great show. Rafael Ramirez, followed by Bill Doran and then Glenn Davis. One and two the count. Ramirez, when he played in Atlanta, had a lot of troubles, and understandably so. For a long time, the Atlanta ground and the infield was really difficult. He's doing well in Houston as he lines out to Dykstra. One down. By the way, things are a little quiet for the moment. Last night was the rematch of a classic duel, Nolan Ryan and Roger Clemens. And it would be hard to walk away from this show today without thinking about Tom Seaver and some classic duels. Uh, who are the two that you think back of that you faced that you could call real well, duels? Well, two, two in my career that, that I pitched quite a bit against, Bob Gibson and Steve Carlton. It was a little bit after Gibson had broke it in and really a contemporary of, uh, of Steve Carlton when he was in St. Louis and then mainly with Philadelphia. High pop fly on the infield, and it's Howard Johnson. Breeze picking up, blowing from right to left out of the southeast. And normally in this part of the world, that well, does become a wet days. wind. So far, so good. Rain is forecast for the afternoon. I mean, they were talking between 3.30 and 4 o'clock, talking to Pete Flynn, the groundskeepers they talked about before, and they're talking about rain, but all the experience in the years that I've lived here in the New York area, this is a... Beautiful Typical day. early summer day, yes. It does not look like rain. Glenn Davis, who struck out in the second inning, will back out because of the airplane. There was some pitcher in the league who was annoyed because Keith Hernandez always backs out every time a plane comes. He said he acts like they're going to land on his back. But you can understand why. I'm going to say, you know, when I played here, it didn't bother me. But when I went away, was traded away and came back, then I really noticed the difference. Al Leiter, for interest especially in the New York area, Al Leiter is pitching that game for Toronto and the Angels leading two to nothing. Leiter traded by the Yankees to Toronto for Jesse Barfield. A lot of controversy in that trade. Oh, sure. Everybody thinks about Nolan Ryan, Jim Fergosi. Jose did, Rio, yeah. Jim Deshaies. How long did it take Sandy Koufax to get going? Well, Cone side-arming Davis with a great breaking ball, and at the end of three and a half, two nothing Mets. It's not just a car, it's your freedom. Oh, a car in good shape? Yeah, had it all checked out. Gas station? Nah, GM dealership. Figure those good wrench guys know what they're doing. Good. So any idea where you're going? Not exactly. But I'll let you know when I get there. I'll be waiting. It's not just a car, it's your freedom. The John Deere promise. Buy this new 1989 walk-off test, test drive it for a full month. If you, you don't, don't agree, agree it's the best mower you've ever used, you, you can, can bring, bring it back for a full refund? The new 1989 John Deere walk-behind. We've either got the best walk-behind mower ever made, or we've got a big problem. I'd like to make a simple point about a new gasoline additive called ProCare. You see, without proper care, even new car engines accumulate deposits that can lead to a rough-running engine. Fortunately, there's ProCare. Added to a single tank full of gasoline, ProCare's patent of Tecron chemistry begins cleaning deposits not only from fuel injectors but throughout your engine's intake system for a noticeably smoother performance. New ProCare for a smoother running engine. Do you know what it's like to walk out onto the fresh cut grass at Yankee Stadium the morning before the game? 
Now you do. Adidas. Aftershave and cologne. The essence of sports. Die Hard, America's most trusted replacement battery. The one over 65 million have stepped up to. Now Sears introduces the most powerful Die Hard battery ever. New Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Houston manager Art Howe, who was born in Houston, had a couple of distinguished moments in his career. You know, he had a home run and two singles and four RBIs in the one-game playoff that beat the Dodgers in 1980. And one other thing, his name should be bracketed with Nolan Ryan. Carter, meanwhile, lifts one to left field. And that's put away by Terry Poole. One down. The other note about Art Howe, he was playing third base. He fielded the ground ball by Dusty Baker, threw the first for the out. And Nolan Ryan had his fifth no hitter. Hart had a lengthy career. He first came up with the Pirates in 74, and he played through 85. And now in his rookie year as manager. Here's Dave Magadan. Ball one? No, strike. He grounded out hard on a fine play by Glenn Davis in the second inning. He could easily be one for one. One of the things Davey Johnson's trying to do this year is use more of his bench, give more playing time to Magadan, stretch it out. Slicing fly ball, pool started in, two down. One of the things that the Mets have going for them, one of their biggest strengths, is their depth. The switch hitting that they have on the team, and he's trying to stretch the playing time out between everybody on the ball club, give everybody some playing time. The pitcher. Davies David always Cohn. had a bad back, a chronic bad back condition. He had to check that yesterday. He was worrying he, he might have to have surgery, but the report is no. And he was the most relieved man in town late last night following the rain out. David Cohn, strike, grounded out. He has a little four game hitting streak. back I'm not sure what that was well what, what was that the cone heads ah the David cone cone heads now can you imagine that I mean you're at home right and they say wait a minute you got your scorebook yeah you got your pencil yeah binoculars yeah you got your cone hat yeah no look nothing at that. surprises me anymore at the look ballpark at this. Uh, head. <laughs> and down goes David at the end of four two nothing Mets and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Witness the dawn of an American classic. Tour de Trump Sunday on NBC. You can still buy a steel for as little as $139.95. See the FS48 Steel Grass Trimmer. Do you know where your steel dealer is? You'll find him in the yellow pages under saws. Whether they got their hits years ago or just last year, all your favorite baseball players are at ABC Collectibles. With over one million cards, you'll find ball players you never heard of before. But there's more, like superheroes of all kinds, Batman, Superman, and the X-Men, original issues of your favorite comic books dating back over 50 years. Plus, ABC Collectibles has a music record collection of over 20,000 used albums and 45s. From heroes to villains to pop stars, they all can be found at ABC Collectibles in Moline. I'm Edward Asner with a critical message for those who have ankylosing spondylitis. This arthritis can result in serious spinal deformity. It doesn't have to. Learn more. Call 1-800-777-8189.
KWQC, Davenport. Buy Rain Dance Car Wax, the longest lasting protection you can buy. And buy Napa Auto Parts stores. Call 1 800 Let Napa for the store nearest you. We're going to the fifth inning. Two nothing Mets. Terry Poole will start it off. He'll be followed by Kevin Bass and then Ken Caminiti. Poole grounded out to the right side in the second inning. 2 0 to Terry. And he pops it up on the left side. Johnson angling out. McReynolds coming in. It's Johnson. We have a moment to salute a great name out of the past. Right hander Gaylord Perry, a 300 game winner in his brilliant career. You talk about durability, there's a man that had it. Big right. farmer from North Carolina. North Carolina. He got more out of making people think that they were doing he was doing something with the ball that anybody had ever played the game. He could powder puff that ball up and rise and bag it up and put more thoughts into hitters' mind than anybody I ever saw. And he also threw a spitter, I think. And threw a spitter at times too. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but he made people worry about it more than anything else. Oh, and one. Imagine uh, one of 19 pitchers to win 300. And Gaylord Perry and Tom Seaver are two that come right to mind. Mm -hmm. A couple coming up the road, too, if Tommy John can mm -hmm. continue to pitch well. Nolan Ryan is not far away for a fly level. See where, think about? Uh, see where Ryan had everybody angry, knocking down hitters, hitting hitters. Well, uh, he had everybody in Boston. Angry. Yeah. Oh, one, one and two. If you're if you're a power pitcher and you don't pitch inside, you're I mean you're wasting one of the strongest things that you have going for you. And Nolan is not afraid to pitch inside, nor is Roger Clemens. Two and two. Things have changed in the old days, and I mean before the multi-purpose stadia were built, where the ballparks were smaller. It seemed like pitchers really pitched for their lives. The pitcher did not have to fight for his life quite as much. And so the knockdown pitch is not quite as obvious to those of us who are watching anyway. I think the biggest point on that, Vinny, is that baseball rules came about and they said, okay, uh, uh, the umpire's judgment, they throw at somebody. The next pitcher that throws at somebody, they're out. So the guy that throws at it, at a hitter, or, or let's say brushes a hitter back, or hitter, even intention, not intentionally. All right, let me ask right, you the next one. Did you ever have an umpire go out and uh, tell you about throwing at somebody? Of course somebody? I did. I hit somebody after I uh, was in a, I guess somebody hit a home run and I hit a left-handed hitter. Accidentally. And, and, and an umpire in the National League. I hit somebody on the next, very next pitch. And the umpire came out and said, I'm going to have to find you, Tom. I and I said, for what? I'm going to, what can you find me for? For hitting that hitter. I said, if I want to hit somebody, would I hit him with a slider for crying out loud? The umpire said, oh yeah, you're right. Forget it. Don't tell anybody I said anything about it, too. And he withdrew. And the he withdrew, and I went back on pitching. That's a true story. Now, story. let's get into this a little bit. I the, mean, hit, the hitters, one of the reasons I, I, I got sidetracked. One of the reasons is that we, we now have taken the onus and put it on the, the pitcher that hits the second hitter, and he gets thrown out of the game. As a result, as soon as a hitter gets hit, there's nobody. the pitchers aren't going to pitch inside anymore. Everybody protecting the outside part of the plate. Well, David Cohn is inside and outside and rolling along in high gear. He's retired eight in a row, and it's still 2 nothing New York. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the Eclipse by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. My mom always made me feel better, no matter what. 
My mom was easy to love. My mom used to sing me to sleep at night. Sometimes I really miss that. My mother's the most gentle person I ever knew. When was the last time you took a picture of your mom? Kodak Film. Ah, Radio Shack. Here it is. The Candy 1000 SL computer system. IBM PC compatible and sale price for under $9.99. Save $200. Comes complete with color monitor and built-in deskmate software. Word processing, graphics, worksheet. I've never seen one so easy to use. Greetings. Need directions back to your planet? Oh. This technology is more advanced than we thought. And we saved $200. Beam it up. Save $200 on the Tandy 1000 SL system. Less than $999 only at Radio Shack. Stroh's beer now comes in a brand new can. A brand new six-pack. A brand new 12-pack. A brand new 24-pack. And a brand new 11,000-pack. Hey, nobody beats Midas, especially for foreign car brakes and mufflers. He came here because our price was a lot better than his car dealers, and because of our Midas guarantee. Nobody beats Midas. Nobody. Lawrence Yogi Berra, who also managed seven times, won a pennant for the New York Yankees, and managed for the New York Mets as well. Lives in Montclair, New Jersey, not too far away. Man is the New York Mets in the 1973 World Series against the Oakland A's. He must have been something, somebody to play for, huh? One of the nicest men I ever met in my entire life. Ball one to Lenny Dykstra, single to left and single to center. To Lenny two for two. It's two nothing Mets. Thanks to a two run home run by Howard Johnson in the third inning. One and one to Lenny. Howard Johnson moving into the number two slot has just gone wild. I think that one's circling over I, the top of it. <laughs> yeah. I guess with the wind blowing, they take <laughs> off into the wind, and boy, they are coming right over the ballpark now that the wind has picked up considerably. One ball, one strike. Slicing fly ball to the left. Terry Poole is there. One down in the fifth inning. Well, they finally got Dykes out. Oddly, every time he's hit, it's let off an inning, too. Are you a collector? Do you uh, collect? From the days when you played, did you collect autographs no. and autograph balls no. and pictures? I have and, some things around. Yeah, but no. not much. Not much. No. I was a, uh, when I grew up, I had two idols, Sandy Koufax, Henry Aaron. Mm -hmm. I have some things from them. Yeah. I have things stuck away in boxes, but not that much. After, you know, you play for 20 years and have a relative amount of success, you end up with so much stuff. Yeah. You know, we got, I have boxes of what I call stuff. <laughs> one ball with no strikes to Howard Johnson. One and one. Bring it up because Stan Isaacs, a fine writer for Newsday here in New York, had a wonderful column that involved several people whom we know very well. The great Barney Kromenko, who wrote for the Journal American, who's coming up 80 years old. Willie Mays. It was Barney who put the Say Hey label on Willie Mays because when Willie first came to New York and there were so many writers, he, he couldn't remember the names. So if he wanted your attention, he might tug on your on your suit jacket and say, say a hey. And so Kromenko called him the say hey kid. Anyway, Stan had this column, and among other things, he mentioned a ball, an autographed ball that Harry Harris, a former New York sports writer, uh, photographer, has with two autographs on the ball. And the autographs are Joe DiMaggio, and Marilyn Monroe. And he was offered $5,000 for that wow. baseball. Can you imagine? I'm not surprised. Yeah. But then I understand DiMaggio has a ball that would be worth something. There's a high fly ball. The sound of the wind is going to cut that down. And Gerald Young will take care of it. We'll tell you about the autograph ball from Joe DiMaggio after a visit to Marv Albert. Thank you, Vin. And in Detroit in the fourth inning, 
Lou Whitaker with a sixth home run of the season. He knocked out Storm Davis, putting the Tigers in front of the A's. Six to two now uh, in the fifth as Jack Morris looks for win number one against six defeats. Back to Vin. Okay, Marv, in the fifth, two nothing Mets, two down, and Keith Hernandez the batter. The autograph ball that Joe DiMaggio has is not of baseball interest. He has a ball, according to Stan's column, autographed by Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. Mm. Now there's a ball. Hard slider, check swing strike, and the count 0 and 2. Boy, that was a mean pitch. If you're a left hand hitter now, this is a nightmare pitch. Fancy comes right over the top and throws hard. His ball is straight. But you combine that with his slider's breaking ball, it can be very tough. That was mean. 0 and 2 the count. You know, the time that he's been out with his injury, he's pitching a superb ba a baseball game here for the Houston Astros. Just a footnote, on the 24th of April, he got a base hit, pulled a hamstring. So this is his first time out since. You'd expect him to be very rusty, and he's not. 0 oh and 2 to Keith Hernandez. Dan Schatzader throwing down in the bullpen. Fastball just kind of showed it to him. Clancy is due to bat second when the Astros hit in the sixth inning. So Art Howe very possibly thinking about a hitter for him, especially since he's been off for a while. Still one and two. Art Howe has these men on the bench. Gross and Reynolds, the right-handers, Hatcher, Trevino, and Yelding, and Ashby, the switch hitter. Usually you wait on using catchers. One ball, two strikes. Got him. Blew him away. He made some down and dirty pitches to Keith Hernandez. So Clancy lowered the boom. And at the end of five, two nothing men. Let's make the lion bigger. Smaller. That's better. How about black? How about red with block letters? Black. Blue. Barley. Barley. How about green? I think blue. And you are? Peter Stroh. You like blue, Mr. Stroh? Yes, I do. You got it. Script? Block. Strohs or Stroh? Strohs. You got it. Bigger? Bigger. You got it. Introducing a new package from Stroh, the only major brewery in America, where the family still makes all the decisions. Less foam? I think more. You got it. Strohs. Fire brewed, family brewed, for more than 200 years. I remember when I was 12 years old, I wanted to be in the big leagues. Sure, it was a big dream. Dad said, big dreams are what you need if you want to be the best. And Dad taught me about a lot more than just baseball. He taught me the meaning of trust and hard work and what it takes to be number one. Well, I never did pitch in a World Series, but I did make it to the big leagues. You've got to go with the best. Century 21. No baseball collection is complete without this year's hottest new player, the Sports Talk player. You just give me three sliders, I try to take three strong swings. Jose Canseco? I told myself I want to get a pitch to drive. Don Mattingly. Sports Talk plays 164 talking tops cards with stats and tips from all-time greats to current all-stars. I can smell the win and the no-header. That was definitely Mike Scott. And Oral Hershiser And Carlton Fisk. Pete Rose said, this is great. This is the best game we ever played in. Sports Talk, the hottest new player in baseball. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. Introducing the eclipse by Mitsubishi. The fiber that's pound for pound, five times stronger than steel, and is in the protective vests worn by police, it makes up the unique belt of road handler treadlock radials at Sears. Tough tires you can trust. Mookie Wilson not playing today. You know, last year, Mookie hit 332 on the road. That was the highest average of any player on the road. Seven of his eight home runs were hit away from Shea. He hit in the 250s at home. That's hit foul out of play. So you say to yourself, well, okay. Play Wilson on the road and Dykstra at home, but then in checking your homework, you find out that Dykstra also hit better on the road last year by over 30 points. Oh, aren't you playing both? That's it, on right. the road. Take Strawberry out or take McReynolds out. Huh? 
Oh, and one. Ground ball up the middle. Base hit for Biggio. So Biggio has two of the three hits. More importantly, it answers the question for us because Clancy is coming up to bat, so he's staying in. And Shotze to stop throwing. Now, the last time Clancy came up in the top of the third, there was no score. And he tried to sacrifice and fouled out. Now, trailing two to nothing. We'll see if since runs are so tough, they still haven't sacrificed or yeah. risked the double play. He definitely will be bunny, I would think, Benny. And yep. you gotta watch how Madigan and Keith Hernandez at first base charge here. I mean, they will be right down his throat. He's showing bunt and he missed it. 0 and 1. The play at first base on the very first play was a throw over. Now Keith would go out to young David Cohn and put another play on. The, on, the, on the very initial pitch, he threw over to first base to try and hold the runner as much as they could in order to get the out at second base. Don't forget, Bijou runs extremely well. One ball, one strike to Jim Clancy. Bijou at first, nobody out. Top of the sixth. The Mets two runs, four hits. The Astros no runs, three hits. The two runs came in the third inning. Dykstra singled, and Howard Johnson hit a home run. And on the play at first, Hernandez is absolutely sprinting in toward home plate. I mean, when he takes off. No, that's another play. They put the play on again. By the way, that brings up a big point. When you throw over there, Hernandez had better not be too far in, or it's a balk. One ball and one strike. And it was Hernandez's style that caused that rule to go in the books. That's ball two, two and one. A year or two ago with Keith coming down the line he was about 30 feet towards home plate and the pitcher threw over to him. Well watch now where he goes. He gets to there and then he keeps coming on the pitch. And in one of those spots the pitcher decided to go to first and Keith was 30 feet down the line so he threw the ball over there. They said wait a minute that's not fair. Pretty good bunt for Clancy to get Biggio along and just as importantly stay out of the double play. Clancy looks like he's just happy not to get hurt on the plate. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't blame him either. Oh, and David throws hard. <laughs> Center fielder Gerald Young. Now, I'm talking about David Cohn. A story about a pitcher and a pitching staff. Kansas City starters last year, the Kansas City Royals, won 59 games. And there are three other ex-Royals that won 55 games, mm. not playing for Kansas City. Cohn 120, Melito Perez 112, Danny Jackson 123. Fouled away by Gerald Young, 0 and 1. Produced some great pitchers. Their own staff winning 59 games. And then Perez, Jackson, and right here, David Cohn, who won 20 last year. Well, people always talk about one sided trades, and that turned out to be a one sided trade. David Cohn for Ed Hearn, and Ed physically not sound and has never played. And David has just progressed and progressed. One ball and one strike to count. Years ago, they talked about the Nolan Ryan Jim Fragosa sure, trade. That was the a, big trade. A big one sided trade. Frank Robinson and uh, Milk Pappas. Time they're going to call a balk on Cone. So Biggio is balked to third. Oh, two balks today. That makes this a highly unusual game this year. Well, the book is alive and well at Shea. And again, whether the complete stop is made, you see the hands are still moving. And that's the whole case. The hands have to come to a definite stop. A discernible stop, right. said the rule book. In other words, they have to see you stop. One ball, one strike. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of difference between that stop and the last oh. one. <laughs> and that probably will get pitchers crazy. In other words, if you're consistent, okay. But if it's right. inconsistent, that's worse than the original call itself. And that used to be the one the way the umpires used to look at it too. Consistency. Brown foul, two and two. Big at bat for Gerald Young. He has only three runs batted in this year. Only 37 RBIs last year, and 576 times he went to the plate. Oddly enough, we talked about him with his uppercut swing. This is, might be a situation where he'd like to have it. Get the ball in the air to the outfield. They're giving him the run. The infield is way back. Curve ball hit off the fists. The run will score. Hernandez feeding Cone coming over. So Young was jammed, but he dribbled the ball, and he got his man in. 
picks up an RBI. Vigio is back in the dugout to put on the equipment, and it is two to one in favor of the Mets. Interestingly enough, the last four wins by the Houston Astros, the scores might surprise you. You know what they were? You know, you think of them as a two to one club. The scores were six five, seven six, twelve four, and five four. Ball one. Art Howe has had, for a while anyway, pitchers to burn in some respects. In one game, Art Howe used Jim Clancy, Bob Forsh, Danny Darwin, and Rick Roden. It's a lot of talent in one game. Two and one to count, but the key to the Astros, can they get some runs? And again, we remind you of the story we heard at the start of the day. Alan Ashby could be and maybe, that's all, could be or maybe traded to Pittsburgh for Glenn Wilson. Alan, the switch hitting catcher, sitting in the bullpen. Danny Darwin and Mike Scott. Two balls, two strikes. Side armor hit down to short. Howard plays it fast and loose and gets his man. One run, one hit, and at the end of five and a half, two to one minutes. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. Introducing the Eclipse GS Turbo by Mitsubishi. Oh! <laughs> hey, going for a swim? Yep. No pool. Fine, I'll just work out in your gym. Uh, no gym. <laughs> I was hungry anyway. Downstairs for a bite? Fine, yeah. No restaurant. Fine, that's it. I'm back in my room. No room service. Wake up! Who are you? You should have stayed at Holiday Inn. For a few bucks more, you'd have gotten everything you wanted, but no, you couldn't pass up a bargain. Fine. I'm just gonna grab myself a bucket of ice. Water. Why take chances? Stay with someone you know. Holiday Inn. This is a brand new $18,000 car. Put in a leading motor oil. This is an identical new car. Put in Mobile One. Start the bus and drive. Under extreme conditions, temperatures inside your engine can reach 570 degrees. Of course, Mobile One costs more. But then, under extreme conditions, look at what can happen to conventional motor oil. Mobile One. Isn't your car worth the extra protection? Folks in these parts think Tom Lawton is the best thing to ever turn a wrench. But back east, they'll put their money down on the guys at McClellan's. It seems in every town there's always one place that does a little bit better job fixing your car. And it seems the things they all have in common are great mechanics, great service, and Napa parts. Look for the sign of quality car repair. Napa. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. Introducing the eclipse by Mitsubishi. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Uh, Daryl Strawberry spun around one ball and no strike strawberry hurt his shoulder recently swinging the bat there are some who think that perhaps he's making a mistake strike one and one in lifting weights and that maybe that in bulking him up a little bit has contributed to the problem one and one Foul back one and two Willie McGee Pulled muscles in his rib cage. He's missed 20 some odd games. How strong do you have to be? How quick do you have to be? Yeah. I, I mean, there's there's not a big there isn't a park that can hold Daryl Strawberry to the opposite field to boot. Two and two. 39 home runs last year. Second in the voting to Kirk Gibson for the MVP. Probably should have been third too. I think Andy Van Slyke should have been second. In the yeah, he had a great, great year. Got him. Mean. And again, Clancy using that hard slider down and in. 
I don't think I ever see a, a hard slider without thinking of Steve Carlton. That's you take the oh. words right out of my mouth. Jeez. You know, if you put this in a mirror, this is what it would have been like for hitters in the National League to face Steve Carlton. The ball just boring right down in on your knees. Looks like it's going to be out over the plate, and you start your swing and just can't catch up to it. Just keeps eating you up inside. Oh, and one. Talking about throwing hard. I was reading about you know when Nolan Ryan pitches. I think he psychs the hitter a little bit because he grunts every time he releases that ball and from 60 feet away. I mean, it sounds almost like a growl. <laughs> Top fly to shallow center. Ramirez going out. Doran going out. It's Doran. Two down. It, can't, play. it couldn't be a bother, though. There's no way, Vinny, if you think about it. It can't be a bother. No, because by the time you hear it. Because that's right. The ball's already cross. gone by by the time. Well, I Nolan love it. throws faster. <laughs> Since some of the young hitters. We're talking about how he grunts when he pitches and Mike Flanagan said well you know when I was a kid he said I tore my vocal cords and that's why I don't throw as hard <laughs> grunt <laughs> were you a grunter I when I came up sure we all did on this young staff Nolan could do it so we all could yeah that's right if he did it I do it strike oh and one to count Jeffries grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. Did you ever have any blister trouble pitching? Never did. No. Nolan was the guy. Who I know. That's what made me think of. That's right. Right too. And Nolan, he would throw. I threw off first finger, and Nolan threw off the middle finger. Oddly enough, the guy was the oddball. You mean you're talking more pressure on the on the I, index on, than the yes. Mm -hmm. Nolan on the on the middle finger, and he would get the blisters on that middle finger. But he also would squeeze the ball. I wasn't. I didn't squeeze the ball the way he did. What did he do to try and toughen up his fingers? I mean, in the old days, the fighters used to soak Pickle their Brian. hands and pickle Pickle Brian, yeah. Did he too? Yeah, they had. You know, I had, I lockered next to Nolan in the clubhouse. He get he get something in the mail every day. How about Roberto <laughs> Kelly? He's using garlic mm -hmm. on his wrist, and the Yankees don't want to dress around. No, him. nobody will sit next to him on the airplane. <laughs> One ball and two strikes to <laughs> Greg Jeffries. We have two out in the sixth inning. Now the Mets leading the Astros two to one. Two balls and two strikes. Well, he wants to swing at absolutely everything. Absolutely just undisciplined at the plate. And that ball way over twice. his head. He wants he's only had that one base on balls all year. That ball's over his head. He wants to swing at it. And you don't he, think he's pressing some? Well, he came in here hitting 180. If he doesn't get this base hit here, maybe he figures he won't make the Hall of Fame. Out of way. Well, you know, really, uh, recently. Davy Johnson took him out of the game and he said he was a little worried that they were going to send him back down. So he's living with that thought. Maybe he's coming to the reality. It's hard. You don't walk in and there's Davy Johnson. You don't walk in and hit 350 every year. Especially in front as a rookie player. Three and two. And of course pitchers are a breed unto themselves. By that I mean Pitchers all over the league probably exchange information. Hey, oh, how do you yeah. pitch this guy? How do you, and they just gang up on you. Yeah. Three and two. It'll be interesting to see if he takes a walk here. Falls out of the strike zone. Whoa, he took it, and it was a borderline strike, and down he goes. Clancy is really in high gear now since the home run by Johnson. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Every time you open the air, it's dangerous. I am dangerous. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Kelly McGillis. Your lawnmower. You spend hundreds of dollars on a machine you hate to use, then treat it that way. But you always expect it to work. If you own a Lawn Boy, it will. All Lawn Boy mowers have a commercial grade engine. You don't even have to change the oil. You'll hate to use your Lawn Boy for years and years and years. Save green wherever you see green at your Lawn Boy dealer's green tag sale. It's gonna be me. It's gotta be me. Hey, I see you're playing Iowa Lotto. You feel lucky? Then why not play Lotto America, too? It's easy. Just pick one more number, and you'll have two chances at two big jackpots. Then you'd really have something to sing about, right? Make it be me. It's the double play that could win you millions. Wallace's is your spring lawn and garden center. One geranium or a thousand. One fig tree or ten. 
Wallace's has everything you're looking for, from perennials to shrubs and more. Topsoil and peat moss, just $1.59. Cement bird bath, only $14.99. Whiskey barrel planters, $12.95 on sale. Wallace's hardwood mulch, just $10.50 for three bags. Wallace's, your total lawn and garden center. Bettendorf and Rock Island. Watch newspapers for valuable Wallace Buck. How to dress your mate for bed, Monday on Donahue. We're going to the seventh inning with the Mets leading the Astros two to one. Bill Doran, Glenn Davis, and Terry Poole in that order. So the numbers three, four, and five hitters coming up with the Astros down by one. One ball and no strike. It has turned out to be a dandy of a pitching match between Jim Clancy and David Cohn. Odd in the sense that it could have been a blowout too, Vinny. That's hit foul. You know, as a pitcher, you've got to think that an opposition has maybe five, four, at least three times in the game that they can score. I mean, during the course of a game, as a pitcher, you've got to stop a team from scoring three, four, or five times. Otherwise, you know, normally speaking, you're going to have your one, two, three innings, or your one, two, and a hit, and a ground out inning. And then there's going to be three, four, or five times to score. The Mets blew their chance to score in the first inning. This could be a blowout. It could have been a blowout, right? And now we're still in a one-run ball game. We could be looking at a four or five to one right now. And you know, when you think about it, with Clancy just coming back, with the Astros, a team that really has to scrape to get runs, had the Mets got a couple in the first inning, they might have taken Clancy out as early as the third inning. And now he's retired the last ten in a row. Now he's on the beam. And it would be more than that, as you see a base hit by Bill Doran. If it wasn't for the error, he would have retired everybody since Howard Johnson's home run in the third inning. That's the only man to get aboard on the error. I stuck in whatever scores we do have. The Angels giving Al Leiter a bad time, three to nothing in favor of the Angels. Detroit has turned one around despite McGuire's home run, trying to help Jack Morris get a win, six to two. Mark Gubazaw has not allowed a hit through five innings in that Milwaukee game, but all has gotten him is a tie. And the Red Sox leading Texas two to nothing in the third inning. So the tying run, Bill Doran, and the batter, Glenn Davis, and of course he can get you a lead with one swing. Breaking ball and a good one. Two runs, four hits for the Mets. One run, four hits for the Astros, and we're in the seventh inning. Doran, a good base runner at first base. 17 stolen bases last year, which is thrown out four times. On one, and he's going, and then decides to get back and got back. You know, an interesting thing years ago, you talk about people who really study this game. Keith Hernandez trying to make the tag on the runner. Let's take a look at it now. Watch the tag. All right, see, there's his glove. Here comes the throw. And see him bringing it by way of foul ground. You see that? Okay, that's the point we want to make in a moment. One ball and one strike to count to Glenn Davis. Two, two and one. The great branch Ricky. I remember attending a lecture from Mr. Ricky a long time ago, and he was talking to a group of first basemen, Gil Hodges down. And he said, gentlemen, there is no way you will ever tag a runner starting the tag by way of foul territory. Ever. And you know I've watched it over the years and it worked. Runner going to throw, bad throw, right into the runner, and Doran can keep on going to third because Johnson was going over to back up. And the tying run is 90 feet away with nobody out. Carter probably trying to hurry the throw, didn't have a grip. That thing really sailed. They got a good pitch to run on a breaking ball. It just seemed to get behind the ball and sailed right into Doran. All the defense going left and the ball going right. Good heads up play by a real bulldog of a player in Doran. Nothing on the field that he won't do to beat you. And really heads up at every moment on the field. Talking about heads up, did you notice as Doran broke, he looked back at Davis. You have to think it was a hit and run play. Does everything right. Yeah. So 
Adorn is at third. The infield is up. Nobody out. And Davis, who has struck out twice, the big RBI man, now has a chance to pick up the tying run. Two and two. Just did get a piece of it as he lost his bat. That's that mean pitch where Cone drops the arm. It's either the slider or the split fingered fastball. One of the two and Davis is way out in front. That was a nasty pitch. He opened those left hips right away. If you're pitching to him and he has just done that, would you come right back with the same pitch? You got both sides of the plate that you can pitch to here. And you have made such an effective pitch there that you have Davis in the you have him in the saddle, so to speak. He just in between both sides. And jammed him a little foul. And it's going to wind up on the roof. Both Carter and Hernandez going into a slide to try and catch it. That's a magnificent sight, wasn't it? Huh? That was terrific. I've seen a hundred catchers slide, but about not a first baseman as well. About 35 years of sliding right there. Great. Can they slide in together? <laughs> Watch this. The converging bookends. Carter from the right. Supposing either one had caught the ball, who do you think would have covered the plate? And how? Look at Carter looking back at what are you doing over here? Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do. <laughs> so Doran, the tying run is still a third. Nobody out. Two and two, the count to Glenn Davis. Over the top, and the curve missed. Oh, did he have him set up for that pitch? Davis is totally off balance at the oh. plate. One time one of the best hitters in the National League. And look at that left side open up. The left shoulder, the left hip gone. The code made had it all set, having given him sidearm stuff, come over the top, a big downer, and just missed it. I think everybody, everybody was struck out there except Doug Harvey. Got him, fouled. No, got him. He dropped it, but he did not touch it. So Davis strikes out for the third time. Boy, that's some tough pitching. One down. An argument over at the Astro dugout is whether he foul tipped the ball. Gary Carter just couldn't handle it inside. He missed the ball. Art Howe perhaps maintaining that Carter had punched out Glenn Davis by smothering that ball against his chest protector. But obviously, Doug Harvey right there. So it is still two to one in favor of the Mets. One out. Now you have a totally different horse in the race Terry Poole Poole is not an overswinger not a power hitter a contact hitter and of course with one out he is really at his most dangerous ball one who will try and put the ball in play certainly as a contact hitter as he has been through his entire career the Mets are still playing their infield in the outfield playing in about the same position as they played for Glenn Davis. What about, I just thought, do you think he'd try to squeeze with him here? I don't think so. He had a long look at his third base coach, Matt Galani, and immediately that put the thought in mind. So at least we'll think about it. Le left hand hitter, Cone pitching from the stretch, mm -hmm. contact hitter. I would doubt it. Two balls and no strikes. And Kevin Bass on deck. can and all you have to do is prearrange with your catcher and say listen if they do put the hit and run or the, put the squeeze on I'm just going to throw the ball outside who has no way to defense it he can't knock the ball down and don't have to worry about it now it's ball four that by the way the only walk given up by David Cohn so first and third one out and Kevin Bass who had a modest four game hitting streak he's 0 for 2 Bass with 11 runs batted in playing every day. Boy a lot of thinking going on not only by manager Davey Johnson but the Mets infield put their heads together Hernandez with Cone and then Jeffries Johnson and Magadan had a meeting and Carter met with Cone. So here is Bass. Can't swing. 0 and 1. 
Now Bass is a strikeout hitter. Where Terry Poole is a contact hitter, even though Kevin Bass does not have a home run. It's almost like David did not want to pitch to Terry Poole. Mm -hmm. Want to go after Bass. One of the things you have to do as a pitcher is try to figure out where your outs are. Bass is not really a double play man. 11 double plays last year, but he did steal 31 bases. One ball and one strike. But if you feel like you can strike somebody out, you may be bucking the odds. You may be doing things against the cardinal rule or whatever. But you know, in a, in a one-run ball game, sometimes you do have to take a chance. But if Cone is so confident, he feels that he can strike out Bass, and okay, he's going to pitch around for Line drive, just foul down the right field line. And on his side, breathing a heavy sigh of relief is Keith Hernandez. When you think about it, it could have been. Had the ball been fair, Hernandez could catch it. So you say, well, it was close, but it might have saved the at bat as far as Houston is concerned. One ball and two strikes, one out, seventh inning, Mets two, Astros one, and the Astros have run as at first and third. Frank Foley put his theatrics in that foul ball call, didn't he? <laughs> In the dirt, blocked by Carter in the runner's hole. Two and two. Good play by Gary Carter. Keeping the ball out in front of him. Get the body in front of the ball. Split finger fastball down the play. See how he curls and rolls those shoulders over so the ball's going to stay out in front of him. And that will lock a lot of base runners. As long as that catcher has the ball out in front of him, it will freeze the base runners. And that's exactly what Gary did. So Doran down the line from third, Poole from first. Poole going on ball three, and another smothered job by Gary Carter. So Carter looking like he is trying out for Toulouse Lautrec down could, on his knees. You can see Cone set that split fingered fastball. Last two, which look obviously going for the strikeout, trying to get the strikeout in this situation with a runner on third and one out. A time run on third and one out. And a possible tiebreaker at second now because of that wild pitch. After Bass comes Ken Caminiti, a switch hitter. Three and two to Kevin. And he walked him, and he walked him in the dirt. The only two walks that Cohn has allowed to pool and now Bass, and Ken Caminiti will present a problem for Davy Johnson. Caminiti has grounded out and struck out. Now, among other things, a young hitter, even more perhaps of a strikeout hitter, as you see Don Ossie in the pen. You can't pitch around anybody else now. No <laughs> more. That's it. You've run out of pitch outs. Cool well, got down to second, and that opened up first base. And again, one way to get out of the inning is a double play and that's got to be going through a pitcher's mind you may drive a manager nuts but how do you get out of the inning without giving up another run the yeah, Mets infield is back looking for the ground ball oh and one David Cohn has five strikeouts but he has certainly done it the hard way he has struck out Glenn Davis three of those five Davy Johnson holding on to a two to one lead. And a big bouncer down to Jeffries. He feeds Johnson back to Hernandez. They got what they were looking for. Four, six, three. Here's another edition now of the characters of the game. <laughs> Characters of the game. Brought to you by A and W. Sit back and try yourself an A and W root beer or cream soda. He's the one and only Max Patkin, the clown prince of baseball, one of the game's all-time unsung heroes. Once a promising young prospect, Patkin discovered a way to stay close to the game he loves, barnstorming all across the country in major and minor league parks with good old American slapstick. 
these days, costumed mascots are the norm, but Patkin's still a true original. His very own face is all he needs to get laughs. Long live the clown prince of baseball, Max Patkin. It's an understatement to call him a character of the game. I didn't always look like this. This took a lot of work and a lot of help from this one calorie diet A&W root beer. And now I'm looking so good, I have a blind date with a big Hollywood star. Hi. A short but highly eventful romance. Pour yourself a rich, satisfying diet A&W with 100% NutraSweet. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the Eclipse GS Turbo by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. Bottom of the seventh inning. The Mets leading the Astros 2-1. to one. Gary Carter, Dave Magadan, and David Cohn. Here's a psychological question for you now as Davy Johnson and Mel Stottlemyre checking possibles. If you are Jim Clancy, don't you suffer a definite down feeling right now? First of all, your team had a chance to tie or win, and they let it get away, and he knows they're going to hit for him. He's due up second in the eighth inning. So he can't go out winning. I mean, wouldn't that bother you if you're the pitcher? I thought it's bread and butter. I think what Clancy, after coming back from the injury, if he can get out of this game of seven innings and pitch as well as he's pitched, you're going to lose your two to, two to one games. You might get another one. You never know. Hit down the line. Foul by Gary Carter and the count all in one. But I think for any veteran pitcher, as long as you pitch well and pitch consistently well through the sequence of the of your start through the season you've got to be happy with yourself and you're talking about a veteran pitcher he's got to be very happy the way he's thrown today especially in the last three innings oh and two and there's a fly ball to center Gerald Young is there Carter I believe was wearing that boogie board wristband but it didn't help him that time. So he's 0 for 3 today. Wearing that band, to our knowledge, he still hasn't had a hit where seven Mets have worn that thing. Seven Mets and one announcer. There was an announcer here today. But <laughs> there it is. Oh, there's the announcer. There's the announcer where it, it came to me too late. <laughs> and you had to return it, I understand. Is that right? They're rare and precious things, I guess. <laughs> One away in the seventh inning. Uh, Dave Magadan at the plate. The Mets two runs, four hits, one error. They struck quickly in the third. Dykstra singled and Johnson homered. Danny Darwin and Dan Chatzeter throwing down in the Astro bullpen. The Astros run in the sixth inning. Biggio single, sacrifice, walked to third, came home on a ground ball, and that's it. Two to one Mets and we're in the bottom of the seventh. Mets had a chance in the first inning to really get a jump and didn't do it. A one hopper Davis staggered by it gets his man. Take another look as to why he led first baseman in fielding. Boy that thing was coming hard. I ball just needs him up and stayed with it though. Legs and get the glove down as low as you can. Easier to come up than it is to go down. Well, that's 12 in a row retired by Jim Clancy. But if you threw out the error, which certainly is not his fault, you'd have to say he's retired 15 in a row. That's how well he's pitching. And yet he is losing two to one. And he is due to bat second. It's Biggio, Clancy, and then Young. And when they did score the run, he got the runner down there in scoring position with a sacrifice bunt. So he has had himself a good day. By the way, we were talking before about Mark Bubazov working on a no-hitter in the sixth inning. Bill Spires single to left with two out in the sixth. And that was the end of that. That game is no score, and they're now in the seventh inning. One ball, one strike. 
And don't forget, there has been a shutout in the major leagues for 26 consecutive days. We lost our chance to see one here. So we'll see if that streak continues. Foul ball off the wall just below our cameraman. It just about knocked the peacock off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> One ball and two strikes. The same one as your patch and your coat. <laughs> David Cohn grounded out and struck out. He has a four game hitting streak, which is really something for a pitcher. And he lifts one to left center, but that's where Gerald Young hangs out. And that's that. So Clancy has retired the last 13 in a row, but it's not going to be good enough. It looks like he's going out losing to the one. The moment. There are those that take us by surprise. Sometimes real or yet to be realized. That's why you can count on MasterCard at any given moment. In nearly three times the number of places as American Express. Wherever you happen to be, wherever the moment may find you, MasterCard, master the moment. To prove how long Rain Dance Car Wax lasts, just add water. Dance, the longest lasting protection you can buy. The Honda Lawnmower. It was first with a blade brake clutch that stops the blade without stopping the engine. First with a maintenance free automotive type shaft drive. And first with an easy starting overhead valve engine. It's no wonder. This is the first lawnmower good enough to be a Honda. This part doesn't fit. Doesn't fit? Doesn't fit. Book says it fits. At Big A, we supply the pros, so we have to know what we're talking about. And our parts have to be pro quality. It's one more way we earn the A every day. My friends, they dragged me to this really trendy restaurant. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't expect roast beef. No, oh, roast beef. So what? Does this mean I've been trending my whole life? I got a taste for some real food. Well, it's time to make a quick move in a 2-1 game in the in the eighth inning. Francis fits awfully well, and he can still win the ball game. Well, he's going to go out this inning for a pinch hitter. Meanwhile, the Mets are making a couple of changes. Kevin Elster is now the shortstop. Howard Johnson has moved over to third. strike. Elster holding on to the record of consecutive games played without an error. They, he dropped a foul ball after running a long way the other night. But they ruled no error figuring he had to go too far. Biggio bunting that one back towards the seats. Biggio is two for two. He has two of the four hits against David Cohn. So the Astros are kicking themselves. They had the bases loaded one out in the seventh and failed to score. The Mets are kicking themselves because in the first inning, Dykstra tried to tag on a ball that wound up hitting the right field wall, and they wound up coming up empty. And that takes care of Bezio. Six strikeouts for David Cohn. And again, that's that down and dirty, mean sidearm pitch. Roy Campanella described the hitter's feeling best when a pitcher did it. He said it gives you the jelly leg. That front leg turns to jelly. That front leg will buckle, that's right. And the thing is that the left side's got to stay closed to be able to hit. You can't commit that left side, and you can see it come open. I don't remember you uh, sidearming oh, much. Oh, yeah, sure. Not a lot. Uh, not a lot, no. no. But all of a sudden, in, in certain spots with two strikes, when you need a strikeout, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I drop out there. And throw a fastball to set it up and try to strike somebody out with a breaking ball out of the same plane. Give somebody a different look. 
You don't worry about hurting your arm, coming side arm, or anything like that. I'm or losing did. something. Some pitchers, I've heard pitching coaches, don't drop your arm, don't side arm, because you lose more than you gain by intimidation. You know, three. If you only throw three or four or five of them a game, then that's not you know, that's not something to be concerned about. The only thing to be concerned about, if it's effective, you use it. If it's not effective, forget it. Put it on the shelf. Three and zero. Oh. And he walked him, so the time run is aboard. It's Greg Gross. Three walks. He has walked three of the last five hitters he's faced. And immediately the Mets show some concern. No, the Mets have only one complete game as you see the bullpen. It looks like mirror images down there tying shoelaces. Roger McDowell and Randy Myers. Mets with one complete game and David Cohn has it. Is there a team without a complete game? Yes, Virginia, the Montreal Expo. We're going to have a runner. Eric Yelding will run for Gross. So Gross walks, Yelding runs. Gross back in the dugout. And here's Gerald Young. One out, eighth inning. Two to one men. Again, one of the great luxuries of Gerald Young had great back control and discipline. You know, you could do something here. You could hit and run or try to start that runner and get things going, maybe create something. Boy, look at the size of the medallion swinging from that chain. It's almost as big as a manhole cover, and he gets it back inside the shirt. If that thing flies up and hits him in the face, it will hurt. Wow. That will happen to you. I've seen players that have almost chipped their teeth, those things bouncing off their chest. Look at that. It'll hypnotize in the mouth. you. You look at it long enough, it'll hypnotize you. One ball, one strike. Naturally, they make pitchers take bracelets or chains off. But a base runner can Most base runners wear a bell wearing. around his neck if he wants. <laughs> That's close to a bell. There he goes. On a hit and run pop fly, back a third and foul ground. Howard Johnson makes the play. And Yelving returns to first. Yelling had a great jump at first base. One strike. He talked a little bit about discipline. Of knowing when to lay off a pitch. I think Yelling had the base stolen. But Young popped it up. Young going 0 for 4 today. And he came in hitting 210. So he really struggled. And here is Rafael Ramirez. So it has pretty much been a case of shut down Glenn Davis and you shut down Houston and that was the theme going into the game and Glenn Davis has struck out three times today so the Astros have only one run and that's popped up and it'll be Keith Hernandez the wind playing with it it's now a fair ball way to go don't take this sitting down that was such a tough play and remember the tying run was spinning around and would have scored. What would you give him about a nine five on that? <laughs> about dive? a nine three. Nine three. 